Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. We have a Mars window coming up in 153 days and we have a Mars contract transmit or recover scientific data from space around Mars and we need some extra science in order to get the technology we need to get better antennas. So we are going to send a probe with the antennas we have and a lot of them. So I describe this as the porcupine arrangement where we have a whole bunch of antennas that hopefully will combine to give us enough range. We have eight of these little helix antennas for CubeSats. Uh, they are not really antennas, so this is not going to help other things communicate right now. But they are our maximum range antennae. So we have 1.6G, 2.56G uh, and lesser things, uh, but these give us the best range. So yep. But it is only direct comms, so that is the rub. And we have some rudimentary instruments, just a thermometer, barometer, and accelerometer there. We've got the early controllable core standard, hibernate in warp is on, so it's fairly heavy. Uh, we've got these solar panels, and it's not showing the Mars amount here. Uh, each of them can get, let's say, 23 watts around Mars. Uh, taking a look at what the early controllable core has as its stats. It's got 50 watts base. However, it has the hibernate in warp mode. So uh, hopefully we will not exceed that. It says that resource rate is basically 1% in hibernation mode. So it should be all right as long as we don't push it. Uh, though, yeah, as long as we are recharging during time warp, it'll be okay. Uh, of course, we'll have to recharge after we transmit the science. I thought about putting goo, but let's not overload it. Uh, this could potentially get into orbit around Mars. That is my hope, so that we get more science that way. But we'll see. So, I'm going to build two of these. And it is launching on the SE-2060 rocket, which has an SE-2060 engine at the bottom and the usual uh, engine 2 vacuum on the upper stage. So, our normal configuration and we will see what happens. So, building, and building another one, and we'll just time warp to the window. Well, we'll obviously complete those and time warp to the window and see what happens. Uh, in any case, this contract isn't up for a while, actually. Uh, where is that up? Uh, 6,000 days. So we'll have many opportunities to fulfill it in case this for some reason goes wrong. Uh, we do want to launch to Venus next, and if this works to Mars, it'll work to Venus. And we will maybe send an uh, entry probe to Venus as well. But let's do Mars first. We should be able to complete that even before the R&D building uh, upgrade is complete. And so we'll be just in time to unlock that science. Okay, we are on the pad. We are lined up as far as I normally line up. I just line up with the moon and hope for the best. Uh, there are more complicated ways of doing this, but... Yeah, for now I just use the moon to line up with the plane of the ecliptic and the rest of the solar system. So, the simple way, and hopefully it'll work out for us. So, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. We do have a backup if necessary, and launch. The little probe has plenty of delta V on its own. It's MMH and Mon 3, but the rocket should be able to transfer it over to Mars, hopefully, or at least do most of the transfer. Very simple, straightforward rocket compared to what I've been dealing with in Next Space Rebels in particular, but uh, it's nice to have something that's sane sometimes. And go! Second stage is lit. Bearing set. Alright. We continue. Oh, I think we are safe to extend the little antennae up here. Oh, that was actually the science. Whoops. Actually, one was the antennae. There they are all poking out. There are satellites like this. Actually, TDRS satellites tend, or TDRS satellites, have all these pokey antennae all over the place. But 
That's probably more for bandwidth than range. I don't think they were intending to use it for range particularly. Well, I sure cut it fine this time. It doesn't look like we have as much in the stage to transfer with as I thought, but still it will do most of the business. Okay, and shut down. 288 by 143 or 144. Alright, so let's see. Let's target Mars. Apparently something is communicating back from Venus. Okay, Maneuver Planner, set, ASAP, create node, transit duration 363 days. I was thinking like 180, uh, this is because of inclination, but we're not that far away from the descending node, it shouldn't be that hard, well maybe, yeah, since it's trying to do a single burn, let's just do it manually. Let me just plot it. The single burn would probably be more efficient in terms of delta V, but I do want to try and get there sooner rather than later so that we get the science by the time the research uh, R&D building construction is done. I mean, that's not too far right there already. So, I mean, our timing is overall pretty good. That's in 272 days, though. I'd like to get there faster, but um, let's see, when is the R&D building done? 300 days, so it's still ahead of time. Okay, we're going clockwise, but that might be good. Not sure, depends on, I mean, maybe that's not good. I gotta think about where Earth might be. Uh, either way, it's probably bad. <laughs> uh, let's see, um, let's try this side. How much is it going to take to capture? We're still coming in pretty slow. So that's a loose capture. 1,500 only. So we have a 3,776 meter per second initial burn, 800 correction uh, right there. Again, uh, probably a mid course correction, a more proper mid course correction would be more efficient though. Still, this could be done. I'm not that wedded to the idea of capturing anyway, since this can't be a relay satellite. It's not super important. It'll be a bonus. Maybe we'll drag the alternate one in and add a relay dish to it. It was mainly an alternate in case we had an engine failure on this one. Okay. Oh, we don't have comm. Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, if, if, as long as we had some comm initially, we would be able to go ahead because that we can run the stage out, but yeah, we don't have any comms here. Wait in orbit. And go. Oh, we had some boil off, so we don't have as much delta V as we had before. Well, are we going to get some other line around here? If not, that might be it might be dangerous to ignite the probe zone engine. I mean, we've got a very tenuous thing back to that geostationary satellite. Oh, well, let's try it. Okay, staging. It's gonna be, it'll take a while though. Oh, now we're only through the geostationary satellite. You know what? Safety's sake, let's, sh oh, we lost comm. <laughs> Uh, just as I was, I, I literally shut down the engine on my throttle. Okay, well, it's gonna take a few minutes, so hopefully we will regain communication by the time we need to shut down. Oh, we've got comms now. Probably Hawaii. No, that's not the right longitude for Hawaii, so. Oh, we've got something. Maybe Tanagashima? Okay, we have the barest of encounters there. So then we plot our mid-course adjustment again. Uh, yeah, maybe we should do it mid-course, since we have an encounter there. 
Might be okay. Yeah, it costs much less and gives us a better chance of doing the capture burn. The reason I had it at the descending node is because we didn't have an encounter, or it didn't seem like it. But since uh, during the actual burn we ended up with an encounter, comfortable doing the mid-course adjustment for long. So, we still have a chance to do a capture burn. Let's tweak that a little bit with this maneuver node editor. Once we get into Mars SY, we can make sure we're on the right side to get comms. So we might switch which side the periapsis is on if that helps. Okay, so 69 meters per second in 110 days. And let's make sure we have power here. Mm, we do have power and it is recharging nicely. Oh, and of course we, uh, should we launch the alternate at all? Uh, or maybe I can put the, I, I don't know whether I should launch it. They're cheap anyway. Let's launch it with the relay antenna. So I'll just add them instead of replacing the eight that we have there. We have a level two DSN. So 11.3 gigameters or 11.3 million kilometers. It's not really the maximum amount of range you could need from Mars is like more than 200 million kilometers. So even if you put eight of these, it's not gonna be enough. Whereas eight of the helix antennae, if, if it's just purely additive, that would add up to enough. I mean, I forget what the equation is supposed to be for how these work. So yeah, uh, it depends on how the relay antennae actually work. So anyway, they sure take a lot of power, I know that. Okay, so... Save it. Okay, we've got a relative inclination of 9 degrees to the moon, and I think we can cover that during the launch, so I'm just gonna go ahead. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. So, off we go again. Same idea, slightly different probe. Oh, the engine failed. The engine failed. Test light got us. Finally it happened. Oh no, hang time. Um, wait, can I, uh, can I activate engine? <laughs> Such cheats. Oh, can we, can we catch it in time though? Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh my, oh my. Uh, <laughs> this is so not legit. Okay, all right, whatever. You play by the rules of the game, whatever they are. Well, we're gonna. I don't know if we can make orbit with this one like that. Maybe we'll just send it on the slower trajectory and see if that's possible. We've lost a lot of delta v though. Fortunately, I think the upper stage is pretty robust as far as thrust weight ratio at the start. It's more than one. So that's important. Well, that was nearly like a SpaceX landing situation right there. Well, we need to correct that inclination. Actually, you probably don't need to very much. It's not that much. And going out into inter interplanetary space will mostly cancel all that out. Okay, second stage. You've got some extra work to do. And fairings. I'm gonna rename this one Mars Probe 2, just so I'm clear on which one is which. Okay, and... Shut down, uh, a little bit high on the apoapsis. And we are good. Basically lost maybe about 800 meters per second or something like that, or maybe even less. So not too bad on that weird engine shutdown and reactivation thing. Probably I should have just let it stay shut down for, I mean... Well, maybe someday we'll see something like that, I don't know. I mean, will we ever see an engine shut down and then reignite? Hmm. 
I doubt they would try it, but I'm not sure. I mean, someday it ha has to happen, right? I figure someday it has to happen. So anyway, we will just have the MechJeb... Nope, not that one. Uh, MechJeb Optimal Transfer. What does our communication situation look like? Uh, well, we've got a forward-looking one right there, but it might get stretched vertically, if you will. Um, it's basically the same location, and that means that that's Australia right there. Same situation. We can, again, run this stage to depletion as long as we can ignite. Okay, and go. As much as I'm tempted to use that RCS on that stage, separa separation and ignition. Okay, we do have comms now. Still burning, no problems. Lots of comms. Please let there be an encounter. Uh, okay, it's run off and we don't have an encounter. So let's see what's happening here. Okay. Mm oh, a little bit more we needed, looks like. Now, going slower in may mean that it takes less to capture around Mars. So we'll see. Okay. So how much will it take to capture after our 380 day transfer? Seems like the bear is sort of capture a thousand, so we can manage it. We can manage it. Alright. There is a shot. We'll add this alarm. And that'll do it for this Mars opportunity. Okay, make course adjustment time. All the lines look to be green. In fact, we do have a line between the two Mars probes. So, that's good. And ignition. Well, you know, since we can do this with these probes and just put so many antennae on, do we really need the new dish? We haven't started unlocking the technology yet. Maybe, maybe it's just not necessary. It's worth considering that maybe a different technology might be more worthwhile if it turns out that this is okay without it. Um, I would very much like to not be rotating right now. Uh, there. Okay, off. <laughs> okay, a little bit tight. A little bit tight there. That's not too bad. Let's go with that. Inclined orbit will help potentially, maybe. I don't know. Want to get into orbit. Looks like we've got 2,000 to work with for that. That's already 1,000. Do we want a tight orbit? I don't think so. I think this will be fine. And then maybe we can lift our periapsis up afterwards. So that'll be the plan there. This is looking pretty good. And let's uh, deal with Mars Probe 2, but making sure that we get the SOI change alarm for this one. That's after the Venus transfer window, though. It's later than I wanted it. Yeah, how did we end up arriving so late? <laughs> Gosh darn it. I thought I had arranged for an arrival much sooner than this. Didn't I? I swear, I had, I had plotted for an encounter earlier. But no, we got this one. Oh well. Okay, so we did not get the early encounter before the R&D building upgrade that I wanted. And so we're going to have to deal with the Venus window first. Well, we know what we're launching, so... Okay, uh, we'll deal with Mars Probe 2, build a couple more of these, call them Venus Probe instead, and launch those. Okay, and ignition. All right, let's hold it there. Let's see what's happening here. Oh, well, that one's more or less as planned. That will still get us into orbit. 
we can probably get into a lower orbit. Let's not turn all over the place at this moment. Yeah, let's plan to just expend what we've got. Okay, more or less like that. All right. So this is on its way. Well, I'm going to build some Venus probes, and I'll base them on this. I'll put the two relay antennae on those as well. We'll build those and quickly launch those as well. Okay, so this is the first of our Venus probes, uh, same as Mars Probe 2 in the setup. And we do have a backup, but if this works, I probably won't send the backup out. Got some Z fighting down there for some reason. Anyway, uh, SAS on, throttle is up. And we have completed the R&D building upgrade. You can see we're a little bit ahead of the Venus window, but it was just more convenient to do it. Yeah, and it'll give us some time in case we have to use the alternate. So, yep. Ignition. And launch. So I'm not planning to send the, the one that's supposed to land on the surface this time. We'll do that in a different window because I'm really more interested in the Mars ones right now. Uh, we'll just send this one over there. So I guess test flight, unlike uh, test flight, doesn't like explode the engines. Test flight was able to explode the engines, which definitely would have prevented me from actually reigniting the engine. Test flight, I guess, does not do that. I sort of wish it did, uh, so that. I didn't have the opportunity to relight the engines um, because, you know, some of these have more than one ignition. Of course, if it only has one ignition, that's a different story. Maybe I should, uh, even though I would recommend using test light, myself use test light just to keep myself extra honest or something. Oh, it looks like we're releasing the fairings at the same time. That's fine, though. Okay, separation. All good. I was gonna release the fairings immediately anyway. And shut down 224 by 159. And we've got a fair amount left. All right, let's see how the Venus transfer is going to go. Oh, there's a little Venus rise right there. Hey, there's Venus. This, I, I don't think it's a general situation that you start your burn when Venus rises like the moon in the stock Kerbal system, but uh, as it so happens, we are starting our burn as Venus rises here. All right, and go. Okay, staging, and go. All right. Okay, we see Louisiana down there. And we are completing the burn. Let's see what's going on over at the Venus end. Okay, once again we seem to be off here. Let's see why. We have a close approach there, maybe just a little bit more. Let's see. That's a little bit high. I'll leave it inclined, I think. Okay, and how much will it take to get into orbit? Seems like a little bit more than for Mars. 2,257, so we'll barely make orbit with what we've got, but we can. Okay, so that is on its way. Nice view of the east coast here. Add that alarm, and that'll be it for the Venus transfer window. We'll reserve the other probe for some other opportunity, but this is sort of complicated. We're going to be entering the SOI of Mars with the first Mars probe, then doing this mid-course correction, and then the second Mars probe. Okay, we are in Mars SOI with Mars Probe 1. We have only 7% signal strength here. So, yeah, we needed all 8 antennas, antennae, folks. We need every bit of that. And it looks like our periapsis is on the Earth-facing side, so that's fine. We should have comms there. 
so we can proceed, but first we might as well go ahead and get the science since it just says transmitter recovered scientific data from space around Mars. It doesn't matter how low. So there we go. And transmit. Okay. And let's transmit that. Of course, we want the science anyway. Very important. And transmit that. So that we can get 160 point sciences. That's what we unlocked the R&D building for. So, all right, we got those. Let's try and get to orbit. Uh, we only have uh, like nine hours until we have to do the correction with the Venus probe. So, anyway, as long as this keeps spinning, I think our electric charge will be fine. Oh, there's Mars. Okay, we have an eye on it. 7% still. Taking a look at it. Basically, Earth is on the opposite side of the solar system from us, so that's why it's 700%. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know what that means for Mars Probe 2, whether it's going to have enough comms or not. Because it's arriving later and Earth will probably be even further away. Might as well get some more science here. Okay, transmit that. Tempe Terra. I don't even remember that biome before. Okay. Gravity scan is really the only one we can keep doing for new science now, I think. Anyway, we will start burn in 19 seconds. And go. Okay, we have captured. Okay, I think I'm satisfied with an orbital period of under five hours, so that's fine there. Um, let's take a look at what that seems like. That's sort of like that. And we'll actually lift the periapsis up so that we get a better view of things. And we'll still have enough time to do the Venus probe. We're we do have a relay to our other Mars probe, I think, is what that this line back is. See if that helps anything. Okay, prograde. Though this does limit the science we can do. I guess we'll give the science another spin while we can. Ah, uh, the gravity scan over Midlands is not useful. Oh well. I mean, this doesn't have the relay dishes, so I'm not entirely sure why I'm doing this, but... <laughs> uh, well. Now that's probably good enough. We'll have an option to bring it back down again if we need to. If we think that that's the best way to go. But for now, let me jump to the Venus probe. Okay, I think that's close enough. Ignition. Oh, no, no. Kill rotation. No, stop! Okay, stop, stop. Okay, that's fine. Just keep it like that. All right. Uh, well, we still have our chance to capture, but it's barely a chance to capture here. So we'll see. We probably can't flip to the other side of Venus like this. Anyway, I'll add the alarm for the SOI change. And we'll focus in on Mars Probe 2 arriving next. Okay, it looks like we do have comms. Signal strength 6% now. And it's just a little bit more stretched, I guess. Take a look at where Earth is. Yeah, I guess it hasn't moved on that much. But yeah, if Earth was over here, it might not be possible. If worst case scenario, yeah, probably not. So we will have blackout periods around Mars with this sort of antenna setup. Might have to think about that if uh, when we make our decision whether we're going to unlock that new technology with the better antennae. There's Mars right there. We don't really have a contract, but I'll do uh, check out the science to see if there's anything new, because we do want those points. Mm, well, we got 0.7 there. I guess we shouldn't sneeze at 0.7. Let's just transmit that. So after these probes, we really need to think about how to rescue Milden, at least. Since that's coming up, and of course crew capsules take a long time to build. We've got one Lynx built, but without a... Uh, 
can file it to a rocket. That's that Links S right there. That's a recovered one. And then there's this Links S2, which does have a rocket with it, and that'll be completed in 122 days. We might get comms past periapsis here. Well, we will wait until we get comms. There's a little bump there. Is that Mount Olympus or one of the others? Okay, now we have comms retrograde. Ignition. Obviously, since we passed periapsis already, this is not the most efficient burn. Science, any more science? Near Mars? Okay, Midlands is new. Let's transmit that. We had far over the Midlands, or high over the Midlands, but not near. Okay, I'll take a 10 hour orbit this time. Let's see what other sciences we can get. I've got the current biome down there. Just above. Just above Olympus Mons, sounds good. Yep, we got some new stuff there. We're doing Mars science smoking now. I don't know what altitude high over is. Well, Amazonas Planitia. It's new. Just for the gravity scan, of course. Tempe Terra. Did we do high or low? We did low before, and now we can do high. Elysium Mons. It's new. There's a lot of science here. Utopia Planitia, one of my favorites. Arabia Terra. Uh, I'm missing some of the small ones. Ballas Marineris. Highlands. A lot of biomes. Okay, well, we're going to hit another blackout period. Hello, Space, and maybe we can get that one. And we are out of communication. All right, I'll be satisfied with that for now. Let's deal with the Venus probe arriving at Venus and see if we can get that contract done. Okay, let's hope we're on the correct side of Venus for comms because, well, we're not capturing into orbit if we're not. Okay, so is that being honest? Yeah, so that is where Earth is. Not too far away. We see that we are not on the right side. Well, shucks. Alright, let's see how much it'll cost to flip sides. A lot. <laughs> and let's see, uh, over here, how much will it take to capture? That didn't seem like too bad. Oh, it is too bad. <laughs> oh, maybe not. <laughs> Gosh, that's tight. Okay, but science first. We have comms. We have plenty of comms here. We are very close to the Earth. Um, atmospheric pressure scan is the only new one, though. Okay, transmit. Okay, we got that contract done. Okay. Well, uh, let's do this maneuver immediately, because that'll be most beneficial. I'll manually turn, so that we don't use too much with Smart ASS. There's Venus, I think. Can't imagine what else would be that big round here. Okay, kill rotation there. And go. That's not super better though, <laughs> to be honest. It might give us just a chance to ignite and not a whole lot more than that. But we can expend all the fuel if necessary. Okay, let's stop there. I'll use RCS for the rest. Um, the atmosphere... We want it to be as close as possible. 145. Let's see, 156. Then again, well, there's upsides and downsides to that. So, we it looks like we're capturing with this much delta V, and we have that. We do have a little satellite there already, the Photon. It's up there. We're going to be on this side, trying to communicate back there, so... 
Horizon issue. You, well, I mean, really, we have an issue. On, uh, really, this side didn't help at all. <laughs> I don't know if flipping the orbit was a good idea or not. I think I might have messed up. But we might still have communication with that. Let's see. I think so. But is it actually helping us communicate back at all? Or are we helping it communicate back? Uh, it looks like it has a line back. Okay. We're still high over Venus right now. Okay, just above Venus is Lowlands. So let's just quickly do some science. Yeah, uh, it looks like the atmospheric pressure scan again. Okay. Apparently we didn't pack one of those with the previous mission. Okay, I guess we'll trust that we will have communication through that photon. It seems that way. Yeah, we're, we've got signal strength 6% through the photon. If we were further away from Earth right now, we would not be in luck. And ignition. Just about as close as can be, not quite. So I guess these little probes are basically my mariners or something. Okay, we have a capture. And that's... we'll reserve a little bit of fuel. Total period under 8 days. And we are over in Midlands, let's see if that... well... Gravity scan's been done and the pressure scan is done now. Let's see... Is there anything but lowlands or midlands around here? I feel like there's blatant Venusian disrespect here. High over? Have we done high over? Yeah, it looks like it. I don't know if there's anything except for lowlands, midlands, and highlands for Venus. Oh, well, that's a bit sad, but okay. Alright, well, we have done the contract business. Let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, so 445 science. We didn't really get much money out of those contracts. So we've got plenty uh, for science. Uh, we... Where's the one that we were looking at? Precision engineering was what we were hoping for with the parabolic antenna, which is a bigger relay dish, but we'd still need more than one. Uh, looking at the level 2 DSN is still not great. Not at all. Where do we get Sirius in tonight? Um, this... Oh wait, no that's still not good is it? That's 10G. This one's still 1.23G. Why, why do we even need that? Mariner style extendable high gain antenna. High gain I guess. But we should really just make that long range. But then there's this parabolic one that's really nice. So actually we want that one. <laughs> we want this technology. That's a bit beyond our budget. More expensive command modules are hardly helpful at this stage. But heavy rocketry, uh, somewhat better engines, the methane oxygen and hydrogen oxygen. So we get our first big hydro hydrogen oxygen engine. 15, well, it says 1500 kilonewton class, but I recalculated and it ended up being 1800. So that's pretty nice. That one could do very nicely. There's all sorts of engine stuff. I think I'll sleep on that and figure out what I want to do with our science. Don't want to rush into things. Probably we should pick up contracts and see what is absolutely necessary, but when we look at the crude lunar flyby and lunar mission stuff, the hydrogen and oxygen seems tempting, right? So yeah, that's that might be important. And this methane oxygen engine potentially too, depending on they're both about the same size, it's just a matter of which one we want to go with. The hydrogen and oxygen is more expensive. Alright, anyway, so those are our options and we'll see what we do next, but really we need to rescue Milden first. So with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.